I just came from uh, the Rules Committee hearing. And what was evident to me was that a lot of good things are happening with elections in this country. You know, in the state of Nebraska, in the 2020 election, we saw 960,000 people vote out of 1.2 million registered voters in the state of Nebraska. I heard that from my colleagues on my side of the aisle and on the other side of the aisle, talking about uh, how they had great turnouts in their elections. And the question that I asked the members of the Rules Committee was, why would any elected official, a state official, want to put the federal government in charge? Why would you want to put the federal government in charge after we're hearing all the success stories of this last election? We want to make sure that every citizen gets out and votes. That's the goal of everyone. Republicans, Democrats, that's what keeps our democracy strong. We want to make sure people get out and vote. But when you look at this bill and put aside all the, all the partisanship that's go, that goes on on it, but when you dig into this bill and what's in it, I mean, there's no way that I can support it. For example, if you look at uh, the, the paper voting machines and the requirement, which is conflicting in the bill, it's sloppily written, it's conflicting in the bill, how, do, how does a state election official adhere to that? How do you implement it? You know, discounting the fact that those machines don't even exist right now, but they're supposed to be in effect in 2020. You talk about chaos in an election. Put the federal government in charge with a reckless piece of legislation that, that can't even be implemented. 800 pages of confusion and chaos. States are doing a good job. That was pointed out over and over and over again in this hearing by Republicans and by Democrats. Why would we turn over our election system and threaten chaos in our democracy to a federal government.